We are at with the investigation that will be ongoing. Uh, that will take a number of weeks for us to uh, to bring that to conclusion because there's a, quite a bit of work to do. We will be looking at the manufacture of the gauge, um, how how it was set up at the mine site, how it was taken down, how it was packed, and the transfer, and then obviously receipt, uh, and whether that was all done in accordance with the. Radiation Safety Act and the transport regulations. Um, so that's where we're currently at at the moment. But I'm happy to take questions or, or Superintendent Ray. Are all the companies, SBS, Leo and Centurion, are they all being forthcoming with, uh, with their help in uh, during, during the industry? Yep, all of the companies have been highly cooperative. There's been obviously a number of companies that have assisted us, both companies involved with the original transport, but then other companies that have assisted us in in providing resources to make sure we could do this in an effective way. On, on the ship driver side, uh, are they all professionally certified? Yes, the truck drivers are. There is a requirement for certification uh, within the within the tra for for any trucking line that that uh, is transporting radioactive sources, and certainly. Um, the advice I have is that uh, there has been no concerns about the certification of those truck drivers. What about the procedures? So we are looking at that as part of the investigation to make sure that every procedure was followed appropriately um, and to make sure that it was done in accordance with the regulations and the Act. It will take us some time, and I might pass to uh, Superintendent Ray on, on that question, because uh, being on, on the operational side of it, you know, the, the kind of costs that uh, may be incurred. But it, once that amount is, uh, um, and once we've actually generated what that amount is um, and worked it out, um, then the uh, then it becomes a question for government as to whether they want to take up Rio's offer. Experts have also said the legislation needs to change. There needs to be a bit of a wake-up call as to how this capsule was transported. It never should have been in machinery and then in a box. Um, what is your response to that? So the, the, what uh, the Rio Tinto did was obviously they, they asked a company, a specialist company, to um, put that radiation source um, appropriately package it. Um, we will be investigating whether that was done, but if it is appropriately packaged, um, then they will, have, you know, it should be complied with. Whilst a few um, people have raised concerns about the, the regulations, the, we, we comply with the national and international regulations around the transfer and storage um, of these materials. So the, the regulations per se are uh, the most up to date around the world. They are linked to you know, changing any changes to national or international regulations. Were there any difficulties in sourcing from that box to transport it in, down from, from where it was going to Perth? No, we obviously uh, planned that we would find it and so we had the, the appropriate uh, um, you know, lead storage containers with us, um, with the teams that went up. Um, so that was already planned for, and we obviously have those. There are, you know, thousands of sources that move around uh, every year, and obviously uh, there are a lot of the containers required to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Daryl. You talked before about the equipment that was used for yep. the search, and some of that equipment, no doubt, was helpful in finding the the capsule. Can you be yep. a bit more specific about? What sort of machinery or what sort of equipment was used? Um, no, I can't because um, I'm not an expert on it. <laughs> um, but to be honest, uh, Ansto uh, um, and Opanza want to spread what equipment they've used. And I think there's an opportunity tomorrow for media before they go at the airport um, that they want to be able to share that. So you might be able to catch that tomorrow, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. If it, if it was on the route that we were going to search, the equipment was going to find it. The, the question was whether or not, uh, you know, a tyre had picked it up and had taken it off the route. That, that was probably the, the only doubt that I, I would have had um, about locating it, because if it went off where we were, where we, you know, where that 
goes, who knows where that would be. Um, but I was pretty confident since day one um, on finding it where we looked, you know. How did yeah. uh, Anso and uh, the other kind of peripheral groups get involved? Did you contact them or did they contact you? Or? Yeah, so last Friday we put out a request to the Commonwealth for assistance. Um, we uh, said what our need was and uh, Anso, the ADF and, uh, and PNZ um, answered our calls for help. From Monday onwards, the ADF were on the road. Uh, from Monday afternoon, Ansto were in town, and Tuesday, uh, Panzer arrived. Um, so what, yeah. What did the ADF do? Uh, same thing. Uh, with that, the, the yeah. same equipment. Uh, similar equipment, yeah. 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 Okay. And yeah. do you? Sorry. Do you, can you tell us where you were when it was first found? Can you, yeah. Can you kind of get into the details of the team on the ground? Like, how did they react? Yeah. Um, the the small team we had a had a small team in a closed room when the phone call came through there was only four of us and we kept it secret for a while until the press release um, we had an office of about 20 different people and we kept it from them for about four hours so I think we did all right um, uh, we're at Belmont in the yeah. regional office in Belmont uh, the team's on the ground so we had uh, a DFS vehicle following the Ansto vehicle doing 70 um, and about 74 k south of Newman uh, everything spiked and their computers went mad and uh, they hit the brakes, <laughs> flew out of the vehicle in, in excitement. Um, we uh, took control of the scene, set up a hazmat zone, a hot zone, um, controlled the entry. Um, we verified the source with three different pieces of equipment as well, um, just to make sure that 100% before we, pull, uh, you know, before they even pulled the trigger and rang us. Um, and the ADF were heading, so they were heading south from Newman. The ADF were heading north at the same time. They were about an hour south. Um, their equipment would have picked it up as well. Uh, but the ADF were also equipped and trained in the recovery side, so they took over the recovery. Um, they entered the hot zone, they picked the device up, verified the number because we had to turn it over. The uh, serial number was facing down. So um, we weren't 100% sure that uh, it was the one that was missing, so we had the original serial number. They, um, uh, they managed that, 100% identified it. And then they sent in another team to, to pick it up and put it in the pig. And there is a, there's a photo that was released yesterday. Uh, it kind of seems like the, the image has been doctored a little bit. So that photo, was there like a, a lens or something taken to stop the, the radiation blur? Or, you know, you know, um, so there was two photos released. The initial photo came from a phone um, that was zoomed in just to show us that we found it. Yeah. And then the ADF took a, um, a photo right in with a big lens to take a photo of the of the um, capsule itself and get the serial number off and I think they released that as well the, the second one yeah um, so, some of it was blurred over the serial number from damage on where it's hit the road and been run over um, uh, so there was like I think there was eight eight figures letters and numbers and I think one one and a half were, were damaged but the rest was identical so, so you think that the, it was hit by a car or like driven over? Oh highly likely it's on the main highway so yeah, yeah. No, 100% not. So it's um, been tested. So part of the recovery efforts was to pick it up, put it in the pit, make it safe, and then the crews then re-entered re the hot zone from a contamination perspective to make sure um, that it was, was clear and safe, and that's been verified by Radiation Health as well. Oh, one of hundreds. No, no, definitely not, because the capsule's in, intact. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming that the staff are working around it. They have to wear special gear. What's this kind of safety? Um, so time and distance is our friend with radiation, so um, they put all that in place. Uh, they restricted the amount of time that somebody was near it to be able to turn it over and near it to take a photo and near it to pick it up and that kind of process. So um, they wear um, a extra PPE when they do that, uh, which is all still for a pretty short period of time. But it's, The conditions, yeah. I mean, if it's hot down here, it would have been... It's hotter up there, yeah. Any idea what kind of conditions they were working? Uh, I was 40 plus, just over 40, so yeah. Um, took about four hours to recover it from all the planning and practicing and they, they went through the routines. They set up a, a, a mock area and they tested their procedures of sending different people in and um, practiced it so that when they did it uh, the first time that it was going to be right. So. No questions before about the cost and how much yep. the operation would have cost from an operational yep. resources point of view. Any idea? No. Um, so no dollar figures on it at the moment. It'll be in the tens of thousands. Of course, there's been 60 people. There's a lot of aircraft um, uh, flying over 
there's accommodation, there's vehicles, um, there's overtime, it, it all adds up. Um, final figure, don't know. The main thing for us from a priority was public safety, not the cost, so the cost wasn't, was irrelevant from us from the, from the go. Um, incidents cost a lot regardless. Um, you know, uh, in a, any major bushfire, there's lots of cost. Our priority is putting, put you know, whatever area is safe, so. And what kind of training do DFET staff get in radiation, in, or, you know, radioactivity incidents like that? And did you ever think that you're going to have to use it? Um, so we train heavily in hazmat. Um, so from a, any hazardous substance, radiation is obviously one of many. Um, we, we set up the zones, our hot zones, um, and use PPE and, and identify the product accordingly and go through those procedures. We do a lot of training in that. Um, I didn't think I'd go to a radiation one, though. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can't, I can't, I'd rather not comment on, you know, the procedures that um, potentially led to this. Um, it's out of my realm, but hopefully it doesn't happen again, yeah. <laughs> Did you learn anything from a response perspective that, that you'll change next time? Uh, yeah, we're going to, there's an after action review that we'll do. The interagency relationships that we've had between all the federal um, agencies in particular that have come together for the first time in an incident like this was uh, incredible. Um, there was a lot of learnings that we can all learn. Um, even internationally, there's interest over the success on how it was planned and executed. Um, so there'll be an after action review on it, but yeah. And just quickly, the, uh, when was DFEDS actually first uh, notified of it? On the 25th. Okay. Same, same, the same day as Police and Radiation Health. Yeah. 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 Any more? Anything Happy to take more? No? Yeah. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks All right. Thank you. So you mentioned that, that um, they're going to be doing something tomorrow. Is that and, and? Yeah, they're leaving. Okay. So they, they, they're happy to catch up yeah. from a media point of view. Yeah. If you want to interview the actual team that found it, the person that found it um, from Ansto, the equipment that they used, they're happy to, to talk to the media tomorrow morning about that. Show off the equipment and stuff. Yeah, so they fly out at, don't quote me, I think 12 o'clock. Um, so they have to check in earlier and all that kind of stuff, but we can go through DFES media on what that looks like. So. They, I believe so, don't quote me on the time, but DFES media can confirm that, yeah. So did they fly over, not with the vehicles, but with the equipment, and yeah. then they were set up in the vehicles? Yeah. Which I'm assuming was provided by the government in some... Ah, uh, the high cars. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. 